a momentous occasion, the day the E3 route was launched in Johannesburg, South Africa. Let's go back to that day where we chatted to just some of the people involved in making the E3 route open for business and tourism. Exchange, adventure, scenery and trade. Those four pillars are what the East 3 route is built on. Launching the initiative at Johannesburg Santon Convention Center, where KwaZulu-Natal's MEC for Economic Development, Mike Mabuyakulu, Swaziland Minister of Tourism and Environmental Affairs, Macfit Sibanze, and Permanent Secretary of Tourism in Mozambique, Fernanda Matsine. I'd like also to congratulate the three nations, Swaziland, Mozambique and South Africa for coming up together to this great initiative. The importance of the East Three Route, which is a route that involves South Africa, Guazul Natal part, Mozambique and Swaziland. It's a route that we felt way back in 1998 when our, the heads of state then, President, former President Mandela, former President Chisana of Mozambique, and His Majesty King Mswati of Swaziland signed the Lubombo Special Development Initiative, the LSDI. We then, as ministers responsible for tourism in Mozambique, in Swaziland, in South Africa, was in the Talpat, agreed in May uh, during the Indaba that we think we need to do something more in enhancing, first, the regional integration in terms of uh, boosting the tourism arrivals in our region, activating our citizens in the three countries to be able to visit one another, but more importantly using this route as a route for attracting investments in the tourism products, but more importantly in also in the ecosystems. When we came up with this strategy, I, 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 I bounced it off to the Prime Minister and I bounced it off to the Head of State, His Majesty King Amaswati III, and the, the good thing is that no, it's not a new one. We're taking a cue from what the leaders did some 15 years ago, you know, and uh, they, 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 they are buying into it. And uh, I think uh, uh, my being there has re revolutionized tourism, you know. It's something now that is, is, is gaining momentum. Members of the Southern African Development Community, or SADC, do not require visas to travel between countries. This existing arrangement will ensure seamless movement across borders. The influx of tourists means that communities and local business ventures along the route are set to be uplifted in accordance with the initiative's master plan. When we start this route uh, on the 24th, which will start from the Wasnatal site in St. Lucia, we want to ensure that uh, it must have an impact, for instance, in the mobilization of investors. We would have an investors workshop where we bring in your investors to be able to look at opportunities on the Wazul Natal, the northern part of Wazul Natal, where to invest. We already have a Smangaliso Wetland Park, it has got sites that have been put into the market for people who have an interest to come and invest into those sites. But we also want to say this route is also about our people, it's about our heritage, and it's about culture. So for our people who are involved in this route, we also want them to actually be able to sell some of their creative um, artwork that they're able to produce so they can be able to actually benefit economically out of the economic spoils that tourism brings into our people. We also want our people who are involved in the heritage to actually use their skills in showcasing and also benefiting out of it economically. The inaugural expedition begins in Durban on the 24th of October and that's where we meet next. Now today is where all the fun begins. Three beautiful locations in three countries in three days. To give you a better idea of the journey, we'll be travelling up the KwaZulu-Natal coast to the Isimangaliso Wetland Park in St. Lucia. Day two will continue north to Pontadoro, Mozambique. And day three sees us to Swaziland before heading back the following day. With lots of excitement in the air, the delegates scuttled into their vehicles and we were off. G'day guys, my name is Trevor. We're now at the Isimangaliso Wetland Park and we're heading now towards Catalina Bay where we will all be joining the rest of the group. The Isimangaliso Wetland Park in St. Lucia became South Africa's first World Heritage Site in 1999. St. Lucia is rich in titanium and other heavy metals. So in the early 90s, a multinational mining company endeavoured to destroy the beauty and biological wealth 
but the resistance of ordinary people and organizations ensured the new democratic government's ruling to protect the area. Now, during peak season, the wetland park sees up to 20,000 visitors per day. Trevor Collins is a field guide at Isimangaliso and Kluhluwe Umfolozi Park. A wildlife expert, Trevor does day and night drives into these parks. Well, over here we've got six different ecosystems, which is really, really well. Um, it's not very, a lot of reserves, I can say that. Um, we have four of the big five. Unfortunately, we don't have lion in the park as yet. Where they are going to be introduced, we're not too sure. Um, fauna and flora, we've got quite a lot if you look at the estuary base. Um, we've got um, tree species down there, which people actually come on holiday to come and have a look at. Um, fauna and flora is obviously very protected. We have certain areas where we, we are not allowed to go, where they're protected so much, which are endangered plant species. The numbers are impressive. The 332,000 hectare park is made up of three major lake systems, 700-year-old fishing traditions, most of Africa's swamp forests, Africa's largest estuarine system, and 25,000-year-old coastal dunes, not to mention 526 bird species, making it a very popular birding destination. One of the many roof wetting ceremonies the East Three Root delegates celebrated during the trip. This deck was recently built for birders that frequent the Catalina Bay area. Catalina Bay is quite significant. Um, a little bit of war history in the Second World War where the Catalina flying boat planes, from, um, the British planes, used to land over there and they used to utilize those planes in order to bomb the German submarines off the coast of Mission Rocks, which is just the opposite side of um, Catalina Bay. Cape Vidal, also on the eastern shore, is renowned for its golden beaches, making it a popular snorkeling and fishing destination. Recent ecological upgrades were made to the campsite, a number of game viewing roads, and day visitor ablution facilities. Now for these gifts they have to work. They actually have to pitch the tents. <laughs> and I'm going to ask them to pitch them here by the flag of the three countries. <laughs> The effort towards establishing Isimangaliso Wetland Park as a world-class destination has led to a wealth of temporary and permanent jobs and small business opportunities for landowners and neighbouring communities. 31 million rand went into 32 small businesses in the last two years, and 3,500 temporary jobs were created year on year for the last 10 years. But Isimangaliso is not the only area being promoted. Because we have looked at the area up north, I mean the Elephant Coast, uh, considering also the proximity and the feasibility of travel, which is what also the minister from uh, Mozambique was actually saying, that if you then start looking at Pemba, then it starts becoming quite impractical because it's like 2,000 kilometers away from Maputo. Then they have a different initiative with Tanzania, which is the uh, reasonable proximity. So for us, we're looking at the areas north of Kazul Natal, which makes it quite practical for us to continue to combine this and make sure that at the end of the day, it becomes a practical route because you don't want people to then start traveling 1,000 or 2,000 kilometers in between the different areas. Trade and Investment KZN have put together an investment strategy. A document known as the Investment Protocol takes the potential investor step by step through the entire investing process. Firstly, we said that we needed to coordinate our activities better. So we are promoting KwaZulu Natal at a provincial level, but as you'll appreciate that some, in some instances municipalities are doing their own thing. So we crafted the strategy that it allows for coordination. So that's one part of it. The second part is that we talk about the information, the information that has to be available to investors at home and investors who want to come here, potential investors as it were. We needed to make sure that that information is always correct and is available. Even if it's not our own information, it needs to be consolidated and coordinated at the central level. The third aspect of the strategy is the issue of skills development. Guala says they aim to boost SMMEs. Areas in need of development are accommodation facilities, boat tours and training for locals to serve as tour operators. Domestic tourists and investors, the bread and butter, 
are the main focus. The aim is to increase the number of nights they spend on the route, so more products and services that cater to their needs of accommodation, entertainment and restaurants are needed. The global statistics indicate that 80% of the world travelers, they travel within, eight, within a four to three hour radius of where they stay. So for us to sustain and grow tourism, it's very important that we drive domestic and regional tourism. KwaZulu Natal has taken the initiative to drive the campaign. MEC Mabuya Kulu says that support from government and private sector has been phenomenal. This mother needs so because of this peaceful and tranquil offers a relaxing experience and has made me to, to vow to come back some years ago. But unfortunately, I have not been able to do so yet. The province of KwaZulu Natal has actually committed to say, in the beginning to start this route, and we needed someone who would come in and simply say, we think because of our own experience on the South African part, we then have actually said we will be sponsoring this route and its marketing to start with. So we're doing it. However, we're anticipating that once the other countries have been able to find the adequate resources, of course they will be taking responsibility and that we will be able to pull together resources for instance around marketing of this route and the marketing of the region eventually. And for us it is absolutely important that if we are going to succeed as a region, both in terms of trade but more importantly in terms of tourism, we are going to have to find a way in which as countries in this region, the ACDC, we are able to transcend this notion of ideally looking in each country and therefore forgetting about what exists in the region. Of course there is a competitive and a comparative advantage in the sense that for those who are South African companies that are involved in tourism, they want to have the biggest share of the market. We also say to them they can share without necessarily being exclusive and without necessarily preventing others from actually playing. So we think there is space for all of us. And, and I'm glad that the private sector sees the greater part of what we are doing and therefore they are fully behind us. <laughs> a quick ad break but don't go anywhere when we come back we continue our quest up the east coast of Africa to Pontedoro, Mozambique.